Welcome to A2 Council Update, a recap of the Ann Arbor City Council meeting on April 17th, 2023. My name is Elizabeth Nelson, and I served on Ann Arbor City Council from 2018 to 2022. I understand the inner workings of our local government, and I believe that you should too. This is the voting chart for the council meeting on April 17th, 2023. All items were approved unanimously. You can find this voting chart and more information about this meeting at a2council.com. The meeting included a 40-minute presentation from City Administrator Milton Dahoney about the city's annual budget. Mr. Dahoney described a budget that includes the hiring of 27 new city staff, spending related to the bicentennial, a multi-year plan for added amenities at Fuller Park, city investment in a separate building to be dedicated to elections, emergency operations, and CTN, renovation of city council chambers, public restrooms downtown, development of market rate housing on the grounds of City Hall, as well as the potential sale of a city parcel previously designated for the development of affordable housing. This week's city council meeting included one public hearing for a rezoning of 415 West Washington to allow a five-story structure with 157 units of housing. After introductory remarks, public comments, and the public hearing, council discussed agenda items for a little over 30 minutes. 13 people signed up in advance to offer public comments. 10 people spoke on topics that were part of the agenda. The consent agenda included 14 items and over $2.1 million in expenditures. Four items were pulled for discussion. Item CA11 was an easement for public right-of-way to permit the construction of a sidewalk. This location is on Earhart Road, adjacent to a new Toll Brothers housing development. After a brief introduction, the easement was approved unanimously. Item CA-13 was an additional $150,000 in funding to Bodman Law Firm for legal services related to the 1,4-dioxin plume contamination. A local attorney spoke to this issue earlier in the evening during public comment. You should be getting a second opinion. It's not appropriate to have Bodman be the only ones and still benefit from going forward by getting paid even if they lose. And they did a bad job of telling you and the public about the infamous sport DJ and the subsequent corporate process. Council offered two minutes of comment in support of the contract before approving it unanimously. Item CA-14 was a contract for $699,000 with Interface Studios to consult with the City Planning Commission and City staff to develop a new comprehensive land use plan for Ann Arbor. Council members discussed it for approximately five minutes. We expect our comprehensive planning process to make res recommendations of adding new homes and densification in single-family zoned areas and other areas and zoning district. Council unanimously approved the contract with Interface Studios. Item CA-9 rescinded a resolution approved just five months ago. In November 2022, Council unanimously approved a resolution assigning a 20-year lease to Great Lakes Air Repair to manage fixed base operations at the city's airport in partnership with Heron Aviation. Dale Forschler, the owner of Great Lakes Air Repair, has experience managing fixed base operations at an airport in Mason, Michigan. Brian Heron, the owner of Heron Aviation, is a local entrepreneur and pilot who sells airplanes. Council considered rescinding the November resolution in order to award the lease to Heron Aviation alone without any designated partner to provide fixed base operations. This change was not reviewed by the Airport Advisory Committee, which met in both January and March of this year. City staff explained. So as it relates to this most recent activity, the request from Dale Forschler to put the lease in Heron's uh, uh, company name, Heron Aviation Group, came on March 22nd of this year, a week after the Airport Advisory Committee's March meeting and nearly two months before their next scheduled meeting Attached to CA-9 was a written request to change the lease, but it does not include Dale Forschler. In an email dated March 24th, Brian Heron requests that the lease name be changed to Heron Aviation Group. Staff confirmed that Heron Aviation requires the services of a partner in running a fixed base operation at the airport. They explained a new partnership. It's good to, uh, to report that Heron Aviation has actually already reached an agreement with ACE Aircraft to provide FBO services in Ann Arbor. ACE Aircraft, which is one of the two remaining proposals from the RFP 2119. ACE Aircraft is owned by Aaron Enzer, a longtime pilot, flight instructor, and tenant at the airport. He's also currently the president of the Ann Arbor Flyers and operates two local businesses. When the original lease was approved in November 2022, a staff memo referenced Aaron Enzer and explained that his bid was judged to be inadequate by the RFP Evaluation Committee. 
it is worth noting that neither ACE aircraft nor Aaron Enzer is named in the lease. Councilmember Erica Briggs, a council liaison to the Airport Advisory Committee, dismissed the significance of changing the lessee on the contract. Um, it's been a, you know, we've seen due diligence at every stage of the process, so um, I, I certainly don't have any concerns. Councilmember Briggs is one of three council members who have served as liaisons to the Airport Advisory Committee since 2020. Councilmember Briggs served on the Airport Advisory Committee when a proposal from ACE Aircraft was rejected in favor of the Great Lakes Air Repair Partnership with Brian Heron. Councilmembers Lynn Song and Jen Iyer served on the Airport Advisory Committee when the proposal from ACE Aircraft was rejected the first time in 2021. This week, Councilmembers Song and Iyer did not comment on the airport lease. However, in November 2022, Councilmember Iyer expressed strong support for the original lease. I was reassured to note the involvement of a local businessman, Brian Heron, who I actually know to be um, just someone who has a very stellar business record um, in our community. And um, I, I feel very comfortable supporting this resolution and uh, going forward with this. In 2019, Brian Heron and his wife co-hosted Councilmember Iyer's City Council campaign kickoff, donating $1,000 to a dinner party fundraiser that ultimately collected over $11,000 for Iyer's City Council campaign. Council unanimously approved the resolution awarding a 20-year lease to Heron Aviation Group. The lease includes an option to renew for 10 years, as well as a right of first refusal, requested by Heron, to develop vacant land immediately to the west. A public hearing for rezoning of the city-owned property at 415 West Washington in order to permit a five-story residential building prompted comments from 15 people, six in support and nine in opposition. This plan is acceptable. If anything, I don't think the proposed redevelopment is intense enough. So I hope that nobody um, tries to put any additional restrictions on this development. Um, I heard some talk at the last meeting from some council members about quickly slapping on some sustainable development requirements that would make it harder and slower to find a developer. I only wish that, yes, um, we could reduce the setbacks and make this <clears throat> uh, project taller uh, than um, what may be proposed. The site is in a floodplain and our own city and our city's own stormwater expert, Jerry Hancock, Ann Arbor Stormwater and Floodplain Program Coordinator has said nothing should be built on the site. Please consider alternatives to a high-rise building. I believe City Council should represent and support citizens who live near <laughs> any new development. What it boils down to is that 415 is a city-owned property. The city and the county contributed to the contamination over the years. The city has a duty and a responsibility to its residents to clean it up and clean it up now, not waiting for some would-be developer. Clearly does not respect the intent of our code, may very well not meet the letter of the law either, especially because this is a city application, not a private development application. We should be holding ourselves to the standard of meeting our own laws. I live in the third ward, but I speak to you as a former member of the city's planning commission. And one thing you cannot ignore, uh, ignore is the environment or natural systems. We need to respect our floodplains and the floodway. I have been there for 45 years. I have watched the city neglect this site for all of those years. And what we have today is a blighted site, the responsibility of the city. And now we're going to have a development that's going to create a wall between the neighborhood and downtown. And then the city is saying, I want somebody else to pay for this. My neighbors and I have been working for, what, a year and a half to be able to bring this to our council members, to discuss this, to bring things to the table here. And what we get is this. I would... In I really would like to see this council turn around on this project. The early webinars and the early meetings and surveys had a questionnaire that asked for, for goals and prioritizing of those goals. The lowest priority in the entire survey, both residents nearby and citywide, the last lowest score 
was for selling this property in order to generate money for the affordable housing fund. The bottom. Yet that has been the overriding goal. The competing considerations always go by the boards in order to support new market rate, i.e. luxury housing, which will not produce any, any improvement in affordability whatsoever. After this public hearing, council discussed it for approximately 15 minutes. Um, we would be using our brownfield, um, uh, using a brownfield plan eventually to help pay for the clean of this. Um, but it would be um, initially that cleanup would be paid for by private development and it would be ultimately paid back um, much of it through development, through through tax dollars, through that through those. Um, that tax revenue. You are absolutely right that this is the city's responsibility to clean up and we are exercising that responsibility through the use of brownfield tax credits which are designed exactly for the purposes of development and environmental cleanup and which the city uses regularly. And uh, I'm excited that we are moving it forward today and believe that it has a, a real shot at accomplishing a wide variety of our goals for the betterment of uh, the community. Without a formal vote, Council agreed on a friendly amendment requiring that whatever new development be net zero ready as determined by the Office of Sustainability and Innovation. Council unanimously approved the rezoning of city property at 415 West Washington from public land to a planned unit development with the expectation that it will be sold to a private developer. Ordinance amendments to raise both water rates and stormwater rates were approved unanimously at first reading without discussion. At a future meeting, those changes will be subject to public hearings and voted on for final approval at second reading. Finally, Council unanimously approved changes to Council rules that will allow agenda items to be grouped in sequence by topic and allow Council more flexibility in postponing agenda items. The meeting officially adjourned at 10.20 p.m. without any additional public comment. For more details about this meeting, visit a2council.com. Welcome to this week's A2 Council Moment of Zen. I would like to pursue the building of a market rate development on the promenade that you're looking at. A market rate development would generate revenue back to the city. We could put a development there and walk our own talk. It could be all electric. It could be a model for the kind of development we are challenging the community to come up with. You would simply capture the revenue from that development and then reimagine City Hall. We are never going back to a time when this building is full. If we tried, employees would just quit. People aren't going to work where they have to show up every day if they have a choice. 